Hello everyone, I'm Tommy with Studio Sense and welcome to my channel. Today I'm excited, I'm going to be talking about a Parfums de Marly selection today. One I've been waiting to get my mitts on. You've probably already tried it out, but if you haven't, you're in luck because I'm going to bust it out of the cellophane today. And that is Parfums de Marly's Herod Royal Essence. So stay tuned because that and more is coming up next. <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we've got some Herod things going on from the niche house of Parfums de Marly. It's funny every time I say that word, or that name, Herod, it makes me think of the biblical King Herod and other famous Herods like Herod Agrippa and his lesser known idiot son, Get. Now who knows, maybe they like tobacco-based fragrances. And if you know me at all, or followed my channel, or watched any of my videos, you know that tobacco, the chief commercial crop known as in tobacco, whether it's live green leaves, dried leaves, tobacco absolute, just not the kind that you smoke, chew, or snuff, is one of my absolute favorite notes in any fragrance of all time. Now a little bit of a disclaimer, I did pay full retail price for my bottle of Parfums de Marly's Herod, so I'm neither promoting nor partnering Parfums de Marly, but if they ever reached out to me, who knows, I just might. But I'm just letting you know so that you know you're going to be getting just my unbiased, honest opinion today, so there's not going to be any Tom Schillery going on. So having laid that to rest, let's move on. Parfums de Marly's Herod was launched in 2012, eight years ago. That surprised me because I didn't really know a lot about this particular fragrance, but I thought it was fairly newer on the market than being there, you know, sitting on shelves for eight years. It's from the nose of none other than Olivier Pichot, one of my favorite perfumists, known most notably for fragrances like Chrome Pure, uh, Azaro Chrome. Let's see, he did uh, Mont Blanc Explorer. He did uh, Mont Blanc Legend and also I think five additional flankers of Mont Blanc Legend. He also did Eros Flame, Kuro Silver, just a ton of what turned out to be iconic, great selling, very solid designer men's fragrances. So he put his niche glasses on and went to work on Parfums de Marly's Herod. So let's go ahead and take a look at that presentation. <music> So the bottle is beautiful in a classy, elegant way. And there's not really a lot of change from fragrance to fragrance for Parfums de Marly. Maybe there might be like a, the, the change in color or enamel that's used. My primary focus is honed in on the just presentation overall, which is really nice, and then the juice. So let's go ahead and get this sprayed on a tester strip and test that juice out. I will say if you're familiar with any of the Parfums de Marly bottles, the lids are ridiculously heavy. So I'm thinking blunt force trauma on this right here if you tossed it at somebody. And I'll give you a little close up of that. If you've already seen that in the presentation there. So heavy metal through and through with just a little bit of a plastic overlay on the inside. And the atomizer throws out a really good amount of juice. So let's go ahead and spray it on a tester strip here. One, two, three. All right, let's go ahead and try that out. It smells amazing and just being misted in the air. So good, so good. It immediately reminds me a little bit of Pure Havain, Terry Mugler's Pure Havain. Uh, that also has a kind of a vanilla, tobacco, cherry, uh, one, two, three punch. 
that makes it a Mugler favorite. If you haven't tried Pure Havain, it's amazing. Now, this might top it. I don't know yet, but I mean, just straight out of the bottle, I'm really, really liking it. If it dries down and hangs on to that, that sweetness, that vanilla, I'll probably like it a little bit better than Pure Havain. Pure Havain is more a little, a little bit dirtier, a little bit more in your face. This one is a little bit softer. Now, by soft, I don't mean subdued. I mean refined. Like the edges, it's cleaner. It's like a cleaner vanilla tobacco. Such a wonderful tobacco note. Speaking of tobacco, did you know that there are more than 70 different species of tobacco? Speaking of notes, let's go ahead and take a look at, and see what's inside the bottle. We'll go ahead and follow the pyramid note example and look at them top, mid, and base. Pulse point, boom. We're gonna let that dry down. While we're letting the strip and my skin dry down, let's go over those notes. So here it has top notes of cinnamon and pepperwood. If you don't remember pepperwood, pepperwood is like a Javadan aroma chemical. It's got a woody, peppery kind of odor. Um, in fact, Olivier has used pepperwood in, I know, Eros Flame, and I think uh, also um, Azaro Chrome Pure. And don't quote me on this, but I think he also used it in some of the Tommy flankers as well. But it's a, it's a very popular uh, pepper that actually has a, a better lifting quality in some ways than does white or black pepper by themselves. Now in the mid, you've got osmanthus, you've got tobacco leaf, cystus, and frankincense. Now if you remember cystus, cystus is like um, woody herbaceous. It's like, kind of like a uh, almost a medicinal quality to it. Now finally in the base you've got vanilla, cedarwood, vetiver, patchouli, cipriol, and musk. Now if you remember anything about cipriol, it has kind of a clingy, woody, earthy, similar to patchouli but not as dry, just a little bit stronger. In fact the, the essential oil from cipriol has been known for you know in India for a very long time. They use it, the, the actual roots of cipriol, they use it to scent women's clothing including the very well-known traditional sari. All right let's go ahead and check out what's happening with our dry down. So it is maintaining that curve of sweetness from the vanilla but it's drying up a little bit but in a good way and some of the cipriol and the patchouli are mixing together and that dark earthy herbaceousness is coming out which I love. It is very classy, it's very elegant. It's almost like if you like the note leather, it's almost like one of the best of the leather fragrances. This kind of reminds me in fact of Tom Ford's tobacco vanilla a little bit. So it's got that kind of vibe to it. So do I like this more? I, I don't know. I still I need some more experience with this but my first impression is exceedingly positive. Very very good. It's got that apple kind of almost like an apple pie or apple strudel feel to it like Boss Number no. 6 and that also kind of reminds me of a couple of other Parfums de Marly fragrances like it, it's similar to or you can tell that it's related to Pegasus and Carlisle. What I was saying before about this being not being subtle but being refined it is very gentle so it comes through as gentle but strong and that's a really interesting quality to mix in a fragrance you don't see it too often you most often see it in niche fragrances because it's a dance that designer fragrances don't seem to have time for. Definitely making time for it in Parfums de Marly's Herod. You've got strong yet gentle characteristics of this particular tobacco. What I like about it, I think you could make this your signature scent and not necessarily have to worry about what season it is that you're wearing. Obviously tobacco falls within the category of winter fragrances or cool weather fragrances. So I think it would be appropriate to rock this out in the summer sun. In fact, when I was a um, teenager, I worked in a hot dog stand on South Miami Beach. It was owned by my uncle. And a lot of the older guys would come and pull up a table. They would play chess, checkers, poker, whatever game, card game that they would get into and they would smoke cigars. Often while staring out at the waves, getting that brine, that marine aquatic smell, I would also get a dry tobacco and it was actually really, really pleasant. It wasn't a bad sensation at all. It wasn't like, oh, that's awful. Uh, because they would be smoking like cigars, like probably high quality cigars and pipes, high quality tobacco. It would waft into the hut and it would mix with all these other flavors. And that kind of reminds me of that, that somewhat sophisticated, refined, mature, almost aristocratic type of tobacco leaf. And I think in Carlisle though, it's not vanilla, it's like apple and tonka bean, the sweetness coming from the tonka bean, uh, but it is still carries that same familiarity. For those of you that would want to make this your signature scent, I wouldn't necessarily wear this at the office. I mean, it would be okay to do that, but make sure you just dial back on how much you spray. This type of fragrance 
which is dark, earthy, tobacco, vanilla, semi-sweet. It can feel cloying. It can feel heavy-handed to some people. And so just be, be aware of that when you spray. Maybe spray it on or do it, you know, spray once, spray lightly, or spray, spray under clothing so that it's muted a little bit. Uh, but again, nothing wrong with making this your signature scent and making it a year-round, uh, not necessarily seasonally impacted scent. Just like a lot of Parfums de Marly fragrances, the projection, scent trail, the longevity is gonna be above average for this in all likelihood. Like I sprayed it on myself and it's still in the air. It's really, really strong. 11, possibly 12 hours of longevity. Not necessarily uncommon for a Parfums de Marly Eau de Parfum such as this. So far, I really, really like this. I'm looking forward to giving you like a little bit more of an in-depth review on this to give you my final thoughts on it. Right now, it still doesn't top my favorite tobacco fragrance of all time, which is a Zerjoff. It is Naxos 1861. Naxos with a honey and that tobacco combination, it is just so creamy and wonderful. I, I can't get enough of it. Uh, that is, to date, my favorite tobacco fragrance. So it's been on my wrist for a good 20 plus minutes. That earthiness is still there, and it's really nice to see that that vanilla is actually becoming a little bit more prominent. So you get you still get that one, two, three punch. You've got that tobacco, that vanilla, that earthy cinnamon rolled up just like a cinnamon roll in that, that, that cipriol and that patchouli with that earthiness. So it really grounds this fragrance, but it also makes it very elegant and classy. So this I could see quite easily being dressed up. Is it a blue jeans and t-shirt kind of fragrance? Tobacco is an all-star when it comes to being versatile, so it's really up to you. For me, this being a niche fragrance and being a little bit higher, you know, in upper echelon in terms of tobacco fragrances, I wouldn't necessarily dress it down, but I wouldn't go full on tuxedo all the time with it either. You're gonna find a happy medium somewhere there that wherever you're comfortable is perfectly fine. It is very refined, very curated, so it goes to follow that you would wanna use it in a situation where that's more appropriate. You can get Parfums de Marley Herod, of course, from uh, the PDM website, and I will leave that website in the comments below, in the notes, rather, if you wanna visit that. Um, you can also find it on discounters online like FragranceX.net, Fragrance.net, uh, and others. Guys, that's it for my first impression and unboxing of Parfums de Marley's Herod. Fantastic fragrance. I'm pleasantly surprised. As time goes on and I smell this on my arm throughout the evening, I feel like it's just going to get better and better. And that's kind of exciting. So I'm looking to do a full-on review. If you haven't done so, hit that bell icon so you know when I drop new content. Hopefully in the near future, I'll do a full review and I'll give you an update on the final word on Herod. So thanks again for stopping by and watching. Thank you so much as always for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense and I'll see you next time. So the first impression is over, so you can pack up and go home, but for those of you who want to stick around for just a moment or so, I thought it might be interesting to read this little Parfums de Marly letter I guess for lack of a better term, uh, this little small brochure. It came in, it, as you open the box, it's in the very top of the box as you saw in the presentation. I chose not to read it then because I don't want to like bore you with details or you know, minutia that you might not be interested in. But just in case, for those of I mean, you know, you pay 250 some bucks for a fragrance, you might as well read the little note that's on the inside. It, uh, it comes in like French, Arabic, and English on the inside. So I guess they chose those three predominant languages. I'm gonna go ahead and read it to you. Let me get a little bit closer, but it's really hard to read because it's like in gold ink. And I know they were probably trying to be, you know, cool about it. Let's make this look opulent, but you know, gold against a, a dark background isn't super easy to read. So especially with light in my, my eyes. So. Let's see how well I can do, though. In the 18th century, France was the flagship of fragrance, with Grasse and Paris as a leading center. Horses were the pride and story of Versailles. Perfume came into its own with the court of King Louis with La Cour Parfume, the perfumed court, 
renowned for its scented extravagances. Every day, the king requested a different fragrance for his apartments, apartments, and streams of aromatic scents sprang from the royal fountains. In 1743, in memory of his great grandfather, he commissioned Guillaume Cousteau to sculpt his famous masterpiece for the grounds of the Chateau de Marly, Marly Castle. This magnificent work of art, known as the Marley Horses, earned a place on the Chamber Elysees Avenue in the heart of Paris in 1974, where it can still be admired today. Parfums de Marly revives the spirit of lavish receptions and festivities held in the Chateau de Marly for the delight of members of the royal court and foreign dignitaries. Through its original concept, Parfums de Marly rekindles the spirit of fragrances from the splendor of the 18th century, when the finest perfumes were created for King Louis as a tribute to the prestigious horse races he so fervently admired. Makes perfect sense. I saw the um, headliner of a fragrance review from Big Beard Business, I think, and it was like dot dot dot, like the horses. <laughs> so. I didn't watch that review. I'd be interested in, in seeing what he meant, but he might have been referencing this here. So, yeah, King Louis was all about the horse races at the Chateau to Chateau de Carlisle. Interesting, which makes sense. You know, you've got the crest, you've got the horses, and the logo there. So, there you go. Sorry for my cryptic reading of it, but just thought you might be interested in that. Peace out, and I'll see you in a new fragrance review soon.